are these people? The next story that we're going to shift to is a little bit more on the light side, but one that is also near and dear to my heart. Um, and I brought this story because it's not even really a story. I'm, I'm writing the story. There is no article. Um, the article and the story is, is that there is a broader story happening here that few people are seeing and or are mentioning, calling out and um, trying to educate the masses as to what is happening. And what I see is the next wave of millennial slash Gen Z corporate media stars now setting up and going, quote unquote, independent. But are they really? All right. No. So I've got a few examples here of some people that I've seen here recent, just recently, um, and you see them on, on our cover here. So what's going on here? So what I think is happening, first off, is I've got a friend, a couple friends over on Substack who publish. Uh, you've got Michael Ginsburg. He writes actionable truths and actions. If you if check him out and subscribe there, but I also subscribe to Simon Owens. Simon Owens is is more of a media analyst. Uh, he also does a newsletter where he looks mostly at corporate mainstream media, at trends, at numbers, sees who's growing and why, and who's monetizing their stuff and why. So he says he publishes the uh, yesterday. Uh, it seems like there's a real acceleration occurring. In terms of mainstream media veterans making the jump into independent media, they're looking around at the legacy media environment and seeing nothing but future layoffs and contraction. So they're building their own lifeboats. It could be a watershed moment, and it's probably not a coincidence that this feels like the first election where the mainstream media has lost its grip on the narrative as the candidates go direct to voters. And I... I thought that played perfectly into what I wanted to talk about tonight, all right, because what's happening is a much broader thing, is first of all, these independent, these corporate media, especially the younger people that started their careers in corporate media are seeing now that there are outlets that are growing and making a ton of money on their own, going quote unquote independent, but are they really independent? Now, They've got to be well-funded, and they're going out and getting rounds of funding so that they're not really independent, all right? They're answering to their funders. They're answering to maybe they'll even take advertisers. They'll also do subscribers. Now, let's let, let's get into this a little bit. So first of all, we know, and Ispu, throw a shoe at this guy, Mehdi Hassan, all right? Um, very famously, but he, in February exited NBC, MSNBC, and launched a media company called Zatio. Now, he's a, he, he got a lot of fanfare and a lot of hype and a lot of promotion from Substack and from his friends in the legacy media and the shitlib media, and it helped him launch a pretty successful outlet I brought two things that I wanted to mention here is that first of all, he mentions that he he's going to, um, it says Medi is going independent, right? But he's launched a Zatio branded studio. Who do you think paid for that? Independently paid for that? Mm -hmm. And no. teased that the outlet is not just me. He's also, I've been busy a la Nick Fury assembling an Avengers-style team of contributors. I can't cringe hard enough. All right? The kind of big names from media activism in Hollywood that'll blow your mind. That's not going to not cost anything, of course. So he's basically bringing legacy media over to a Substack quote-unquote outlet. Thanks. And then we get, from a month ago... The TO News now has 31,000 paid subscribers and some $3 million in revenue in just four months. So what is going on here on a broader scale, and it's not just Mehdi Hassan, Barry Weiss's media startup, The Free Press, is valued at $100 million right now. This is the Financial Times. 
paywalled, but thanks to Reef getting around it. <laughs> Weiss is one of the best connected media executives in the U.S. and has quickly grown a devoted audience for her website and newsletter in an increasingly crowded U.S. digital media market. The free press raised about $15 million in its most recent fundraising, according to two people close to the process, valuing it at almost at about $100 million. So she still controls 85% of the company, or whoever helped her originally found the company. They have 25 full-time employees paid. Fundraised back by multiple wealthy individuals, according to one of these people. Uh, she's previously raised money from BC. People like Mark Andreessen, who also is VC behind Substack, one of the primaries, and David Sachs, who is behind Call-In and now Rumble and sold Call-In to Rumble, among other things. David Sachs also PayPal Mafia. So the free press makes most of its money right now from subscriptions. I think they charge 10 bucks a month, including to its newsletters and runs podcasts and events such as regular live debates. That promote Zionism like crazy. This week, she posted an article that said they had now more than 800,000 readers. Now, that's free subscribers. I don't know how many are paid. Served by dozens of reporters, editors, and producers. Again, funded legacy corporate media that's, ma that's making its way onto Substack. That's two outlets you see right there. So what's happening here is there's other ones that are starting to see dollar signs that get stars in their eyes and say, I can do that. Shit, Mehdi Hassan? Mehdi Hassan? Damn, I can I can definitely beat Mehdi Hassan. So she says, we're growing fast. Right. So this is Zionist journalism. And when the, the dollars are open to you, when you're willing to simp for the, for the establishment and for imperialism. Now, Hamish McKenzie is one of the co-founders and the chief writing officer at Substack. And he loves to promote and fillet corporate legacy media people. And it makes me crazy. And he knows it. Now, on September 3rd, he said that through back channels, he's heard that Substack is our number one competitor from three major platforms, the New York Times, Patreon, and Elon Musk's Twitter, that some like to call a different name and we won't hear. I see them as... All us fellow travelers in a media ecosystem that will get larger and more valuable. Kumbaya, my lord. Rather than obsess about our uh, individual bottom lines, which, yeah, right, we should all be working together in service of writers and creators. Well, that's awesome. I love the sound of that, but nobody else does. We all have a role to play in the tectonic shift towards direct relationships and independence that the media economy is now undergoing. And what I told him, uh, and I replied to this, I didn't include it, but what that means is that they're coming for you. They're coming for your head. And you need to be prepared. If they see you as their number one competitor, they want to put you out of business. Wake up. Please, for our sake, because we put time. This is the same thing that I was screaming about with Rockfin. We invested time and drove all of our people there to subscribe and and committed to them that we were going to stay there. And now the people that were behind it are screwing us, the creators. So what's happening? Taylor Lorenz. I'm leaving legacy media to pursue independent journalism. Yeah. <laughs> user magazine because she loves to use everyone she's just telling you right now i'm gonna use you right today i'm excited to launch my new publication on substack and i'm not going to read all of the all of this stuff but i did want to bring a few snippets that show an underlying thread of what you what you're going to see here all right under which i will pursue the type of reporting on the internet that has become increasingly Difficult to do in corporate media. I'm going to challenge the narrative by saying exactly what corporate media is already telling me to say. Or once in a while, I'll let something out. But for the most part, I'm going to I'm going to toe the line because otherwise my funding's going to dry up. All right. So she claims to have operated as an influencer and and, you know, she's by going independent. I hope to do more of what I love helping people understand the world around them, inspiring them to build a better internet. Uh-huh. 
holding power to account by sucking them off and honestly having a lot more fun. Uh-huh. Because people are going to pay you and you're not going to have to go to a job and he quit the Washington Post to do this. All right. And that, geez, you know, through my work, I've helped people understand technology and the Internet's profound impact on our world. Why? But how? By outing the libs of TikTok girl? Isn't that what this girl famously did? If I remember. All right. I it's, think, yeah. It, but she says, it's clear to me that legacy media is not the right primary environment for the kind of work I want to do. Well, no, but they've certainly paid you handsomely and you're certainly going to use the dollars that they've paid you over the last umpteen, you know, in the last eight, 10, 12, 14, 20 years to fund your operation while you build. And it won't take long because she's got a following that she built through that corporate legacy media that's now no longer serving her. So she's going to go and see the $100 million, you know, stars in her eyes and say, I want to start my own outlet on Substack now. The hell with these guys. I don't need to do this anymore. You know? Um, well, of course, I'll still be doing my weekly tech and online news culture podcast. Like, okay. All right. Um, and I, again, I don't want to cover all this. She's still going to publish here, but she wants people to sign up, of course. And I'm not independently wealthy. I have rent to pay and living expenses. Yeah. You gave up on all that to uh, because we know that soon enough there's enough people that subscribe to her and that follow her on TikTok and everywhere else they're going to end up paying monthly subscriptions probably to support her you know there's mm -hmm. people with a big legacy platform tend to figure out a way to do that now they have to be big enough and she's young enough at this point that I think that there aren't a lot of them that have moved into this type of space yet all right um User mag is going to publish one to three times a week. Paid subs will have commenting privileges, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, next. But I, I, it's not just about Taylor Lorenz. Now, this is the hard-hitting type of journalism that you're going to pay for. Templating right-wing influencers cosplay as independent media. Now, she's going to decide now what's independent media and what's not. Lady, you've been working for corporate media since you started doing this. So give me a break. All right? Oh, Reef. Reef. Please. No, wrong Reef. one. Come on. No. Coming to a Substack newsletter near you. Yes. All right. But it's not just Barry Weiss and it's not just Mehdi Hassan. You've got the douchebags for the Midas Touch have also now set up their outlet and publication, Midas Plus, where you can now pay for the privilege of listening to these assholes even more than you do, than you have to on Twitter. I can't even imagine who would do that, but you've got these guys. Then we've got most famously this week. I saw that. It's actually it was last week. I saw this, and I said I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Somebody's going to talk about it. But then they talked about it. The her the way that I was I saw it presented, and I. I'm not going to criticize, but I love Sabby, and she's right, I think, about the way that she sees what Anna's pivot is. I don't quite see what I think she sees. What Sabby had said about Anna was that she thinks that Anna is pulling more of a Sager-type turn, going right-wing populist, going after the Dave Rubin type of audience, and sitting opposite Jenk on TYT, to be more of an opposite type of perspective, like a crystal and Sagar. I don't think that's what's happening here. Um, I think what's happening here is that TYT is seeing people build media outlets on, on Substack that are larger than TYT took 20 years to build and they want a piece of that action. And so they sent Anna I, over there to do it. I honestly, cause I thought about this with Anna cause because people argue that she might be kind of stuck at TYT in terms of, I think, she like, where is she going to go? Like, she can't go on mainstream media. And I'll argue she's not popular enough or even having the capital behind her out a la Crystal Ball to necessarily 
make it on her own. I feel like this could be, and you can, and you know this a little better, uh, Indy, but like, I feel like this could be her way of kind of putting her toe in the water of going on her own apart from Jake. Well, I think you that's know? also part of it. I think she's looking at starting her own outlet potentially. Um, yeah. You know, she know she's got friends at Jacobin. She's got, you know, she's friends with Ryan Grimm and with others and, it might make sense, but what she's saying is that the point is to pursue intellectual freedom and open mindedness. And and she's gonna talk about she's gonna talk to people that she knows are gonna piss people off. All right. And she said, This is my effort in pursuing extreme honesty and humility in the quest for common ground with truth without the co constraints of tribal identity. Uh-huh. Right. Because that's what she does all day. Then she talks about a transgender streamer and how she got yelled at for having a tweet and it changed how the TYT audience saw her and she started to, this is why I no longer al align with the left because they cancel and they're just rigid and they're thin a bit. And it's like, oh, okay, whatever. Like you have, like you have been, bitch. Right? <laughs> but here, the intolerance on the left allowed me to publicly reject the idea, the ideological shackles that kept my world small and less informed. You mean sitting at across the desk from that guy jay that right. guy okay okay have not seen her ass at a protest have not seen her nope on the ground none of these guys none of them like not talking to regular people like they stay behind their studio in la like just reporting from it from their safe studio Mm -hmm. While the actual reporters that I know you are trying to connect with who are actually on the ground, actually trying to speak to people and speak into regular people in terms of the reality of what we're seeing, like, on the streets, TYT and the rest of them are not a part of that. Nope. So and they've been that way for years. They don't want to be. No. They They're want fun. the comfort of... Yeah, they want the comfort of being able to report the news from a quote unquote independent base without necessarily doing the work in order to try to re to be legitimately independent. Now, Sabi established how their numbers are falling off compared to their subscription base. They're getting the same view counts as breaking points that has a sixth of the subscribers, but they're much more right. active. They're much more recent. And I'm guessing that a lot of the YouTube subscribers that, that TYT has are not engaged and don't watch. But it, again, it's not even just these two, but what kind of hard hitting journalism are you going to pay for? This is a paid article that she put out the other day. More working class voters are flocking to Trump Can Democrats get them back. Re re you're making people pay to find out Okay. Anyway, moving on. It's not just the... Now, this is, remember, this is the corporate-funded independent media now that we're starting to make our way into, all right, um, from legacy media. Now we make our way into TYT and now The Intercept. Garbage of The Intercept. Um, they tried very hard to keep their ship afloat after they tried to change their funding model and not be able to say that they were fully funded by Pierre Omidyar. They still have some funding and he still ch uh, controls the board, but not quite the same. What we started to see was that, first of all, Ryan Grimm and Jeremy Scahill took over as like editors in chief and they tried to run the, the business of The Intercept and they did an awful job of it. So what did they do? They ran across the street and they set up an, an outlet over on Substack called Dropsite News. And what was really funny was May 2nd, you got a tweet from Jeremy saying, hey, uh, I'm starting an email list so I can stay in touch with people. Right? Just because, uh, yeah, just in case the intercept ever goes tits up, you know, uh, may may maybe I need somewhere to go. Literally 90 days later, July 8th, the podcast Intercepted and Deconstructed are moving and will be co-published to Dropsite News and on the intercept. And with the internet intercepts support, Financially, they also are launching this new outlet called Dropsite News on Substack. Uh, Coming to a Substack newsletter near you. 
Correct. All right. Thank you, Rachel. I'm waiting for her. I mean, I've been saying on how do we miss that for months. I'm waiting for her. It's just a matter of time. All right. So Ryan and Jeremy launched this publication. You want to talk about Smear Merchant and the dirtiest shit ever. Ryan and, and Jeremy have an editor who is married to the communications director for the United Auto Workers. Well, the United Auto Workers have had this problem where there's a federal, federal monitor investigating them for purging a couple of high-end, uh, high-level executives within the union who also work for one of the, I think they work at Chrysler, and um, they have been looking for a way to kind of dismiss the federal monitor. And they used Ryan to write a smear piece about the federal monitor saying that he's a Zionist, and that he was on a list by a Zionist organization of one of the most on top 100 influential Jews, thereby smearing him and saying that he's biased against the United Auto Workers because they said uh, they pro they said participated in a statement last December uh, calling on the administration to cease fire and to to have Israel cease fire. And they haven't even said stop shipping weapons. They haven't even gone very far at all. But then in February, uh, they launched uh, an official investigation, a federal investigation into this. And what they're saying, what Ryan Grimm was trying to do was draw a parallel that was wrong and lying. All right. And I covered yeah. this extensively on how do we miss that? You can go back and check this out. Um, Mike Elk over at Payday Report also reported on this and blew the cover off the fact that Ryan Grimm's source for the story likely was Jonah Furman, who's married to his editor, and Ryan never disclosed that his editor potentially could be married to his source because his source was anonymous, quote unquote. How convenient. All right. This was how they launched this new publication. And they, you know, they, they made a big splash out of it by smearing the federal monitor who was actually trying to hold Sean Fain, a Democratic sycophant, accountable. Really weird. All right. And finally, we get to this. I saw this the other day. You and, showed me this, and I was like, I don't want to see it. Well, so you're gonna you have, have to you're it. you're gonna have to see it. All right. Uh, but before you do, he writes in this article, Hi, this is Van Jones. You might you might think you know me. I've been on TV for 10 years. I've been an activist for longer than that. But the reality is I have not let you know me for real. You're gonna know the real me now. And it's time for me to open up and share with you what I see happening. Uh-huh. I'm scared. Scared about what I'm seeing from where I sit every day with the visions in our country. Notice he's not quitting, nor is Anna. They're not quitting their no. independent media jobs. All right. What's happening ecologically? And as much as I think um, people think I'm an outspoken, um, I've been holding back. Oh, my God. He's been hold Van Jones holding back. No. I've been keeping my mouth shut. I've been playing it safe. I've been scared to say what's true for me. Fully and deeply and ready to get into it. Uh huh? This dude has smeared everybody to the left of him for years. I haven't had the courage. Well, at least nice, nice for him to admit it, but now I'm going to get braver on Substack. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And when you decide to do that, what you do is you get platformed by the chief writing officer of the company. We don't get platformed by the chief writing officer of the company. I get a like for telling him things that I like about it, but I don't get that. We don't get that. Launch a new show exclusively shared through Substack to build a newsletter for an independent outlet. That doesn't get any low, but this guy gets low. But we get a lot of love from you. And that's what's most important because we are incredibly user funded. We don't we didn't rely on the legacy media to pay our very handsome salaries for years and years so we could go independent. And there's no there's no proof that they actually are fully independent and not still funded by an outlet and a corporate outlet to begin with. Um, we fully rely on you. So code slash any news network. 
exclamation donate if you're in the chat on YouTube and it will bring up the link to to uh, support our network and to help us pay for streaming costs and for domain names and for um, what else did I have to pay for? Canva. We, do, we make all our thumbnails using Canva, all the graphics that you see, and everybody participates. Everybody has access to it. We are a collective. So if you please... I'll let Colin take over and do a little begging here. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share our content to fight this oppression on YouTube, although I'm still not convinced it will work for us. But you could try, uh, but share anyway, at least to your family and friends. Um, and make sure to leave a comment that does help, and we do read them many, pretty much all the time. And so we definitely would take, you know, recommendations or uh you know like and depending on the clip they actually have been kind of active in terms of us learning from you guys so um so do please comment and we really do appreciate that and help us get to free k so that maybe we can try to be beat the algorithm who knows but you know but either way you know will help us grow since um youtube is not going to help us at all so the only way that we have been growing is through word of mouth and we really appreciate that yeah for sure